Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In this video you will learn how to use the production environment variable inside of the Webpack config and how to turn some of the features on and off based on your production environment. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. In the last video, we turned off the extract text plugin, so I'm enabling it again. I'm setting the extract text plugin to be used as a CSS loader. And then we also set the disable to false. So everything is running fine. When I change the CSS, Webpack is compiling everything correctly, but I need to go and manually refresh the browser for the changes to come through. Okay, so changing it again to green, I need to manually go to a browser, refresh the page to see my changes. So let's try to figure out how to make the hot module replacement work just when we are in the development mode and use the extract text plugin only for production. We will go to the package JSON and inside of the scripts, inside of the prod script, we will define node environment production. Okay, so this is a flag that we can set to production inside of the script. And then we can use this inside of our Webpack config. This will return true or false. And then we can use it inside of our Webpack config. So at the top of the file, we create a new variable isprod. And now we can get process.env.node underscore env. And we can check whether that is production. So this will return true or false. Then we can create a CSS for the dev environment, which will be simple array with all three loaders. So style loader, CSS loader and SAS loader. So that is the simple configuration that we use in the dev mode. And then we create another variable CSS prod that will be the production config for our CSS. And that is this extract text plugin. So we can copy and paste it. And that is our CSS production configuration. And now we just need to write a simple if statement. We'll create another variable CSS config, which will check if is production is true. And if it's true, we want to use the CSS prod. And if it's false, we want to use the CSS dev. Okay, so now we can reuse this. So CSS prod returns true or false. If it's true, we use CSS production. If it's false, we use CSS dev. And now we can copy the CSS config and use it inside of the rules. Okay, quite simply, we're targeting and rendering inside of that use two different variables based on the production mode. Now we want to run the extract text plugin only if it's in the production mode or if it's not the production mode, which means that we need to add the exclamation mark. Okay, so that will we will check for if it's production and then we are reverting, so the opposite value because we want to disable it in the dev mode. Okay, so we including the exclamation mark here. And now we can quit the build, run it again. And we'll see what we get in the browser. And we've got an error. So let's figure out what the error is. Scroll up a little bit. Reference error is production is not defined. Okay, because I called it is prod. So let's fix that. Save it, run it again. And now we've got a page reloaded with a green text. So let's go to the CSS file, change the color to red, save it. And you see that we've got a hot reloading working again. Yellow again refreshes just the content, not the page itself. And if we look at the dev tools, we should see the hot module replacement working. 
And again, we're just compiling the app.scss. We have the dev mode working perfectly fine, exactly how we want it. Now let's have a look how we have the production set up. So npm run prod. And this should create some files for us inside of the dist folder. And here they are, app bundle, app CSS and index HTML. The CSS has the color blue. So the extract text plugin works fine as well. So we've got both dev and production modes working fine. And now let's have a quick recap of how we did it. First thing we did is create this node and flag inside of the production script in the package JSON. Then we've created is prod variable and checking for the production if it's true or false. Then we created CSS dev, which lists all the three loaders and CSS prod, which has the extract text plugin config. And then we are rendering CSS prod or CSS dev inside of the use.scss loader. Okay, so as you can see, this is pretty easy configuration, but hopefully it makes sense. I'll publish these files on GitHub so you can keep using this on your own project or modify the Webpack config to your liking. Feel free to play with it. Hopefully it will be useful for your own project. And that's it all for today. Hope you learned something new about Webpack 2 and how to use the production environment variable inside of your Webpack config. Feel free to reuse it in different parts of your config to turn the different features on and off. And in the next video, you will learn how to use the file loader and images loader to load your images from the CSS and from your template. Until next time, happy coding. Bye.